Our speaker today is Flavel Nichols. He'll be speaking on broken cisterns. Don't go away. The Churches of Christ of the North Texas area present The Truth in Love. How precious is the blood divine by inspiration here. Rise the lamp, His grace and shine to guide my soul to Good morning. We're glad that you're with us this morning. I'm David Roper, evangelist with the Brown Trail Church of Christ and your host for The Truth in Love. How long has it been since you saw a Bible lesson presented with the aid of a cloth chart the size of a bed sheet? Well, we don't see this type aid much anymore, but it's still just as effective as ever, as you'll see as we listen to Flavel Nichols of Jasper, Alabama, right after this next song. <laughs> My friends, the New Testament closes with an invitation, let him that is a thirst take of the water of life freely. And yet God said in the Old Testament that my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living water, and have hewed to themselves cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. In Jeremiah 2.13, God showed how ridiculous it was for His people to abandon Him, the fountain of living water, and seek water out of a broken cistern. Imagine a weary traveler, his body exhausted, his thirst great, and he comes to two sources of water. One is a fountain of living water, and the other a broken cistern that can hold no water. Which of these do you think would satisfy him? I'd like to think with you today about this principle from Jeremiah 2.13, where a man has left God, left Christ, the fountain of living water, and have, is seeking the living water out of broken cisterns. I wish I had time to talk to you about this entire chart today, 
but I do not at this time have opportunity, time enough to talk to you about the whole chart. But Christ is the rock. We read in 1 Corinthians 10, they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. And He is the fountain of living water. But there are those who have abandoned Christ and they've gone to broken cisterns. The first one I'd like to call your attention to this morning is that they have gone to modernism. Modernism is really not modern. It's a false name. It's old infidelity. They do not believe what the Bible teaches. They deny the miracles of the Bible. They deny the inspiration of the Bible. They deny the virgin birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. They deny the efficacy of the blood that was shed on the cross for the sins of the whole world. They deny the bodily resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead. That's modernism, but it is a broken cistern that can hold no water. There are many people who have forgotten, if they ever did have a clear understanding of it, that the Bible claims to be the Word of God. For example, in 2 Timothy 3, the Apostle Paul said, All Scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly or thoroughly, completely furnished unto all good works. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. The Bible claims to be inspired. The Apostle Peter said that, we are to receive the end or the goal of our faith, even the salvation of your souls, of which salvation the prophets. And there he referred to the Old Testament writers. I'm reading from 1 Peter 1, beginning with verse 9. He referred to the Old Testament writers of the Bible. And he said, Those prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. Now, how could they know what's going to come in the future? How could those Old Testament prophets know the future? They could not, unaided by the Holy Spirit. So he said, that the Spirit of Christ which was in them revealed these things to them. And so in 1 Peter 1, 9 to 11, the Apostle Peter said that it was the Spirit of Christ in the Old Testament prophets. But in the same passage, he said that the apostles and the prophets of the New Testament have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven, which things angels desire to look into. 1 Peter 1 and verses 9 through 11. In this passage, the apostle Peter said that the New Testament was also preached by the Holy Spirit. Modernism is a broken cistern because it denies the miracles of the Bible, denies the inspiration of the Bible, denies the virgin birth of our Lord, the power of His blood to wash away our sins or atone for our sins, and the resurrection of our Lord's body from the dead. Modernism is a broken cistern that can hold no water. One of our members where I once preached attended a denominational school in which a modernist was the teacher of the Bible class. He stated that Jesus did not walk on the water as the Bible says he did. But he said, now, when this young student asked him, do you not believe in miracles? He said, oh yes, I believe in miracles. But he said, it's a bigger miracle to make the apostles believe that he walked on the water without doing it than it would have been to walk on the water in the first place. My friends, that's a ridiculous dodge of the Word of God and it undermines faith in the Bible. Churches of Christ across the world are pleading, let's go back to the Bible. We believe the Bible is given by inspiration of God just as it claims. The Apostle Peter again said in 2 Peter 1, beginning with verse 16, We have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of His majesty. For he received from God the Father glory and honor when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. And this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. Peter said we were eyewitnesses and earwitnesses of the fact that Jesus is the Son of God. And then the next statement may seem strange to some. He said, we have also a more sure word of prophecy. 
We have seen Him with our own eyes. We've heard Him with our own ears. But the written Word of God is more sure than that. We have also a more sure word of prophecy. Or the American Standard Version says, we have also the word of prophecy made more sure. More sure than what? Than seeing with your own eyes or hearing with your own ears. The word of prophecy is more reliable than one's own personal testimony. You know, magicians can fool you and make you see things that you know you didn't see and thus mislead you. But Peter said that the word of prophecy is more sure than that. How do you account for that? Well, let the Apostle Peter explain. He said, For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. And neighbor, that's exactly why you should believe the Bible. It was given by those holy men of God who were guided by the Holy Spirit as they spoke and as they wrote. Keep in mind, please, that their preaching was inspired. Their living was not. They made mistakes in their lives, but what they spoke was the Word of God. And therefore, we need to recognize that the Bible is the inspired and infallible Word of our God. So modernism is a broken cistern that can hold no water, not the water of life. It cannot satisfy the needs of the human soul. But on the chart, I want you to notice another broken cistern. And that is the broken cistern of morality. Someone said, Preacher, don't you think people ought to live good moral lives? Oh yes, God requires that of us. We must deny ungodliness and worldly lust and live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, as, second, as the second chapter of Titus admonishes. So we must live moral lives. But what I mean by this word morality is that to depend upon your own goodness to take you to heaven. If you think you can be saved because you never have robbed a bank or you never have committed adultery or you never have committed murder or you never have uh, uh, told a big black lie, uh, depend on your own goodness. You pay your debts, you vote in every election, you, you live in a good neighborhood and you're good to all the neighbors and you're just wonderful people, a jolly good fellow, that won't take you to heaven. And to depend upon your own morality is a broken cistern that can hold no water. If you want an example of a good moral man who could not be saved on his own goodness, read the 10th and 11th chapters of Acts, and also Acts 15, about Cornelius. This man was an ideal neighbor. I'd love to live in a neighborhood full of men like Cornelius. He was a wonderful person, and yet he had to learn the gospel in order to be saved. He was told to send for a gospel preacher who would tell him words whereby thou in all thy house shall be saved. He was a good moral man already. But you cannot be saved on your own goodness. You have to be saved by Christ. You must be saved by the grace of God, or else you will not be saved at all. None of us is sinlessly perfect. In the Old Testament, God said repeatedly, There is no man that sinneth not. Or, There is not a just man upon the earth that doeth good and sinneth not. Or in the New Testament, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, Romans 3.23. And the other passages were found in 1 Kings 8.46 and Ecclesiastes 7 and 20. So there's no man that can go to the judgment and say, Lord, I never have committed a single sin. I am innocent. I, I demand that you give me my rights. No, in the judgment day, we will not ask for our deservings, but we will ask for mercy. We'll throw ourselves on the grace of God because of our sins. We need mercy. We need grace. We need salvation, forgiveness of sins. And thus, for one to think that he can be saved on his own goodness denies what the Bible plainly teaches. We have proved before the Apostle Paul said, both Jew and Greek, that they're all under sin. For all have sinned in the same chapter. Thus, if we say we have not sinned, the Apostle John says we make him a liar in his words, not in us. And for one to depend upon his own morality for salvation is for him to seek the water of life in a broken cistern that can hold no water. Our Lord spoke about salvation in Mark 16. And he said, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. 
but he that believeth not shall be damned. Even if a man is a good moral agent, if he does not, a moral person, he doesn't, if he does not believe in Jesus Christ as the Son of God, he is not going to be saved. Jesus said, if you believe not that I am He, ye shall die in your sins. And thus we must believe in Christ. And Jesus said, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He told Nicodemus in the third chapter of John, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus thought he was talking about a natural birth, and Jesus corrected him. And he said, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. John 3 and verses 3 through 6. So we must be born again in order to be saved. Our own morality, our own goodness, will not take us to heaven. That's a broken cistern that can hold no water. But a third broken cistern to which I call your attention is denominationalism. Men have organized human churches, denominational churches, and so much is said about them today that many people do not realize our Lord built His church. He said in Matthew 16, 18, Upon this rock I will build my church. He did not say churches, plural. He said, Upon this rock I'll build my church. The night before He was crucified, our Lord went out to Gethsemane and prayed. If you could have slipped up close enough to hear Him, you would have heard Him say, after He prayed for Himself and then for the apostles, you would hear Him say, Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on Me. Do you believe on Jesus? Friend, do you with all your heart believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? If you do, He's praying for you. What do you want, Lord? I'm praying for all who shall believe on me. That includes the 20th century. I'm praying for all who shall believe on me through their word. Well, what are you praying for them for, Lord? That they all may be one as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us. Lord, don't you want them divided up into different denominations? No, I don't want that. I want them to all be one, as the Father is in me, and I am in the Father, that they all may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. He knew that unity in religion would promote world conversion. And divisions into different denominations are nothing but broken cisterns that can hold no water. In Psalms 127, 1, we read that except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. And our Savior, while He was on earth, said that if we have the doctrines and commandments of men, our worship is vain. And thus to have any of the doctrines of men and the commandments of men will make one's worship vain. God said, I'll place salvation in Zion. Isaiah 46, 13. I'll place salvation where? In Zion. But the New Testament tells us that Zion is the church. The church. In Hebrews 12 and verses 22 and 23. You're come to Mount Zion. What is that? The church of the living God. Hebrews 12. God said, I place salvation in Zion, and Zion is the church, and thus salvation is in the church that Jesus said, I will build my church. Matthew 16, 18. This is the church of which Christ is head, Ephesians 5, and of which He is the Savior, Ephesians 1. And thus Jesus Christ is the Savior of that church. Denominationalism is opposed to the church of our Lord Jesus Christ. Every denomination on earth is in competition with the church that Christ built and therefore is a broken cistern that can hold no water. But a last broken cistern to which I direct your attention at this time is worldliness in the church. For members of the church to live as if they've never been separated from the world for them to practice the things that the devil's children do, and to live like the world, and yet sing, I'm bound for the promised land, is inconsistent. Those who do not live right 
after they're converted will also be lost. There are those who teach the impossibility of apostasy, that if you're once saved, always saved. But neighbor, do you remember that in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, the Apostle Paul said, Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day, and he's talking about the day of the second coming of Christ and the judgment day and the end of the world, that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. If man cannot fall away, then Jesus Christ never can come back. There, it is possible. There can be such a thing as falling from grace. Paul wrote to the Galatians and said, Ye are fallen from grace. And those in the church who live a worldly life are certainly trusting in a broken cistern that can hold no water. In Titus, the second chapter, the apostle says that the grace of God which bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us, us members of the church, that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we, we members of the church, should live righteously, soberly, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope in the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. And so we're in looking for Christ, we must live godly, holy lives. In the 12th chapter of Romans, the apostle said, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world. Philip's translation says, don't let the world all around you squeeze you into its own mold. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Those who trust in worldly living, living an unfaithful life to Christ, that person is trusting in a broken cistern that can hold no water. In James, the fourth chapter, the Lord's brother writes, Ye adulterers and adulteresses, Know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever, it makes no difference if he has been baptized and has been faithful for a long time. Whosoever therefore would be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. We must not live worldly lives for members of the church on the job to lie or to curse or tell dirty jokes and filthy yarns and whose minds are in the gutter. Those people are fooling themselves if they think they're going to heaven. We are to keep ourselves unspotted from the world, as the same writer says in the first chapter. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and the widows in their affliction, and to keep himself unspotted from the world. We must not live worldly lives and think that we're going to heaven. John teaches us that friendship of the world is to be an enemy of God and that all that's in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eye and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. The Apostle Paul writes to the Christians at Corinth and said that we're to come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing and I'll receive you and I'll be unto you a father, and ye shall be unto me sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. And then he adds in chapter 7 and verse 1, Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us, us members of the church, cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. The Christian life uh, is a holy life, but it is a progressive life. We continue to make improvements by living according to the will of Christ. And thus we are perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Jesus teaches that we must take up our cross and follow Him if we expect to be saved. Paul wrote about some, even their mind and conscience is defiled. They're impure and they're filthy and vulgar. They're trusting in a broken cistern if they think that they're going to heaven. These are they, the angel told John, these are they that have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Jesus said, Be thou faithful unto death, and I'll give thee the crown of life. In our study on this occasion, we have examined four 
broken cisterns to which people have turned. Modernism, a morality of without Christ, denominationalism, and worldliness in the church. All of these are broken cisterns, but Christ is the rock of which we can drink freely the water of life. I thank you for studying with me. May God help you to turn to Christ for salvation. Thanks to Flavel for that presentation. It's possible that it raised some questions in your mind. I'd love for you to write us and give us a chance to study the Bible with you by mail. Now this lesson is available free on audio cassette if you'll just send us your name and address. Our mailing address will be given in just a moment. You'll want to be back with us next week when Wayne Jackson begins a two-part series on origins. Next week we'll be telling you how you can get a free copy of this 80-page book entitled Fortify Your Faith. This week we're featuring the Springtown Church of Christ that meets on Highway 51 North. The Sunday morning worship service is at 10.50 a.m. If you live in Springtown, they'd love to have you visit them. Now until next week, may God continue to be with you. This has been The Truth in Love, sponsored by the Churches of Christ of the North Texas area. For a copy of today's program, additional information, or Bible correspondence course at no charge to you, please write The Truth in Love, Post Office Box 865, Hearst, Texas 76053. Once again, write The Truth in Love, Post Office Box 865, Hearst, Texas 76053. We invite you to attend the Church of Christ in your area. Join us again next Sunday at the same time for The Truth in Love.